you've all seen these false evolutionary sequence charts which uh, pretend to depict the evolution of man ranging from primitive Australopithecus all the way to Homo sapiens sapiens, the old man of the Cro-Magnon cave, and everything in between. These charts are shown to be false when one analyzes it with critical reasoning and facts. They're no more valid than lining up rocks on a beach or shells on a beach. Let's look at, for example, the middle one to start with, Homo erectus. I've studied this stuff for, since the 70s, so I know all about it. Earlier on, these were called Pithecantheropi. It doesn't say that here, but I've studied it for years. From the neck down, these individuals are known to have the same postcranial skeleton as modern man, essentially. That is, short arms, human-like proportions, and human-like feet. Whereas just before it, the Homo habiluses and all the Homo, uh, or Australopithecans, excuse me, including Lucy, have ape-like limb proportions and ape-like toes and fingers suited for tree climbing. And some anthropologists feel that they were basically just a kind of a running ape on the plains and the grasslands. Now Lucy, they've been infatuated with her since the 70s. And they'll often depict her as being more human-like than what she is. Uh, her anatomy indicates that she's a little different than a female chimpanzee, or actually a pygmy chimpanzee, if you will. She's quite ape-like indeed, whether she walked erect or not. Every one of these skulls has something about it, and it's wrong with its date or it's out of sequence. But going back to the Homo erecti, despite the brutishness of the Homo erectus skull, the inner ear anatomy is essentially like modern man's and suited for erect stance. The inner ear anatomy is important for erect walking, by the way. Now, right at this point, you have the Neanderthaloids, and they're known not to be ancestral to modern man because of genetic differences and also certain uh, morphological differences of the skull and the nasal passages and such. But they like to insert some, something like uh, the Rhodesian man just before them as an ancestor to both the Neanderthals and modern man. And the only reason they do this is because they need some sort of a feasible ancestor. This particular skull is not known as far as date goes. I mean, it ranges anything from 20,000 to 700,000 years old, so they don't know what its date is. They just place it before the Neanderthals because they need something of that form. That's the only reason. But anyways, one should use critical reasoning and look at all the facts when they study this stuff, not be fooled by it. A 15-year-old might be fooled by it. But I'm not. I've studied it for years. In Boulin Valois' old book, Fossil Men, they even have a little chart of their own here. They got a gorilla, a Synanthropus pecunius, that is a Peking man, and then a modern Chinaman. See, so just because something looks in between doesn't make it in between. There's so much range and variation and form of different creatures and animals that you can find in betweens just in the variation. So no one should be fooled by this. But anyways, I thank you for listening and use critical reasoning and don't just believe something without thinking. Thank you.